Joe Biden lit the White House up in rainbow colors yesterday after hosting a ceremony with a child-obsessed groomer drag queen to sign a law that fundamentally redefines marriage, the fundamental political unit, and effectively outlaws the true meaning of marriage understood by Christians, Jews, Muslims, and every even semi-reasonable atheist and agnostic since time immemorial from the public square. And somehow, that was not even the craziest part of the show. The craziest part of the whole ceremony came when Joe Biden attempted to ground all of this grotesquerie in the Declaration of Independence. This law matters to every single American, no matter who you are or who you love. This shouldn't be about conservative or liberal, red or blue. No, this is about realizing the promise of the Declaration of Independence, a promise rooted in a sacred and secular beliefs. Forget marriage for a second. Forget for a second the drag queens and the groomers and the rainbow colors on the White House. This man actually said that the promises of the Declaration of Independence are rooted in sacred secular beliefs, which is a contradiction in terms because sacred and secular are opposites. Sacred means connected with God. Secular means not connected with God. A thing cannot simultaneously be both sacred and secular. It can only be one or the other. And we know which one it is when we're talking about the Declaration. The premise of the Declaration of Independence that we all know, we all can recite by heart is we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The whole point is that we have certain rights, and those rights come from God. No God, no rights. That is the premise of the country. But Biden had to make his absurd claim about secular values because he knows that this law, redefining marriage, as a practical matter, is not really about redefining marriage, which already happened seven years ago, the Supreme Court. This law is about suppressing religion. It's about punishing Christians and Jews and Muslims for practicing their religion in public. It's about banishing God and anyone who wishes to follow God from the public square. It redefines marriage, but for a broader purpose. Because these radicals know that if you redefine the fundamental unit of society, you redefine the entire political order. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment yesterday is from Chris Hansen. Is it, is that the Chris Hansen? Is that the sit right over here? Come on, just have a seat kind of Chris Hansen. I don't know. It's amazing if he watches this show. Uh, he says, Michael should get fined $250 by the DW every time he makes that grr sound during pajamagram commercials. Excuse me, are you referring to rrr? Because that, what, you, I talk about the, the naturally nude nighty. What do you want me to do? Okay, I'm just, I'm just expressing what I feel and what you will feel if you, uh, if you get the nighty, okay? And that will just help make your home a wonderful place to live in. You got to protect that home. That's why you need a ring. Christmas is around the corner. Many of us will be traveling to see our families and loved ones soon. You may find yourself away from home more often than not. That is why I have teamed up with Ring. With Ring security products, you can rest easy knowing that your home and family are safe when you're not there. The Ring doorbell notifies you when guests or packages arrive. Ring's indoor cameras let you keep an eye on kids and pets while you're away. Ring alarm will alert you of any motion detection while the house is empty. Plus, if you add smart lighting around your home, you can turn lights on or off while you're away. Ring's home security products do not just help keep your family and your home safe. They also make perfect gifts for everyone on your list. Not only have I gotten Ring, I have also given Ring to friends of mine. Makes a great housewarming gift. Makes a great Christmas gift, okay? That way, that way you can rest easy knowing your friends and family are safe. Head to ring.com slash collections slash offers to find out how you can live a little less stressed this season with a Ring product that is right for you. That is ring.com slash collections slash offers.
the Respect for Marriage Act, one of the more Orwellian titles for a bill signed at the White House in the most grotesque ceremony the man could possibly put on. The, the, the only uh, thing that could have made the show even more absurd and even more decadent would be if uh, Joe Biden's uh, gender fluid, pan transgender nuclear waste disposal guy showed up in his stilettos with the lipstick with the grown man wearing a leather doggy outfit on a leash. But uh, that man, Sam Brinton, was otherwise occupied having his mugshot taken for stealing women's luggage and clothing and jewelry. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, otherwise, Joe Biden really went all the way here. And he said that this law represents all that is good and decent about America. You know, there's nothing more decent, more dignified, more American that we're about what we're doing here today. It's about who we are as a nation. It's about the substance of our laws. It's about being true to the best of the soul of America. Whatever you think about the law, whatever you think about marriage, there's nothing more decent. You're telling me, hold on, even look, you know I oppose the law. I think marriage has a meaning and it doesn't mean what the libs are pretending it means now. But regardless, maybe you disagree with me, that's okay. But you, hold on, you're trying to tell me there is nothing more decent than having weird groomer drag queens show up at the White House and, and pretend that men are women and women are men. Like, even if you think that's a good thing, you're telling me that between that and helping a little old lady cross the street, that that, that, that is more decent. You're telling me that going out and, and baking a pie for you know, the poor little old widow that lives in your neighborhood. I don't know why, the, why these old women keep cropping up. You're telling me that no, no, no. Baking the pie for the, the sweet little old widow is not more decent than having a bunch of creepy drag queens dancing around the White House. You're I, I just don't, it's hard to, to say that that's the most decent, most wonderful thing to do. Now, Biden says it's really, really decent because right now you see gay people, the LGBT community faces terrible discrimination and, and we had to write this wrong. We had to address this injustice. Justice Thomas went either, even further, and he wrote the following quote. We should reconsider all the court's substantive due process presidents, including Griswold, Lawrence, Obergefell. That means he thinks we should reconsider whether you got the right to access to, concept, to, to contraception. And yes, we should reconsider whether you have the right to marry who you love and that's not only the challenge ahead. When a person can be married in the morning and thrown out of a restaurant for being gay in the afternoon, this is still wrong. Still wrong. Now, of course, neither of those things can happen. <laughs> gay people can get married and always could get married because marriage has a meaning and marriage involves sexual difference. Two men cannot become married to one another. They can buy a house together. They can live a life together. They can visit each other in the hospital. They can do all sorts of things. N nobody begrudges people doing those things, but they can't get married. It's not possible. It's an ontological impossibility. Two women cannot get married to one another. That's just not what marriage means. And certainly, they cannot be thrown out of restaurants for being gay. That doesn't happen in America. Do you know what does happen in America? People get thrown out of restaurants for being conservative. That happened to us two days ago. <laughs> that, the timing of this was just amazing. Because I, I, I mentioned in my all access uh, yesterday that the Daily Wire Christmas party was two nights ago. We had a Christmas party at a, a, a event space in Nashville. And right next to that event space is a restaurant and a bar. It's called Hathorne Restaurant and Bar. I'd eaten there a couple of times. It's one of these sort of fancy, hip, young, cool, bougie type places, but had perfectly nice dinners there before. And so Daily Wire makes a reservation, gets a room at the restaurant. We put a deposit down. This thing is good to go. And then we get a call from one of the managers of the restaurant. He says, hey, are you, are you guys the Daily Wire? And our assistant who was putting this together says, yeah, yeah, that's true. And the, the guy who was managing the restaurant he told us we couldn't come. He told us we couldn't have our reservation 
And I, I don't have his exact phrasing, but it was something to the effect of, your company means to harm me and my employees. We're going we're gonna to harm him by, I don't know, we're going to, we're going to read him too many Edmund Burke quotes or something. I don't know. We're going we're gonna to harm him. We're going to, how are we going to harm him? I don't know. He couldn't provide an explanation for that. We, the Daily Wire, are probably the most buttoned up, <laughs> sort of bookish, conservative outlet out there. We're going to harm him somehow with what? I don't know. All of our assault statistics. We're going to harm him with all of our very dangerous political philosophy, I don't, whatever it is. And uh, so we got booted out. It wasn't just us. There was a, a, a Christian group. It was one of the groups associated with Focus on the Family. Uh, went to have a dinner at a restaurant. They threw them out for being Christian. That's what really happens. That nobody in anywhere in America gets thrown out of a restaurant for being gay or being black or for being I don't, Muslim or for any of the groups that the libs will tell you are under constant assault and attack in America. The people who get denied public accommodation are conservatives and Christians. That's it. Okay, that's, that's what really happens here. And so Joe Biden signs this law to right a wrong that isn't happening and to, to further persecute Christians and Jews and Muslims and any ordinary agnostic person. What this law does, it, it does not redefine marriage. That already happened at the Supreme Court level. What this law does is it repeals the Defense of Marriage Act and it, it opens up Christian, Jewish, Muslim, any kind of business owner that thinks that marriage has a meaning, they will now be open to lawsuits to having their, their businesses absolutely destroyed. And, and they will be destroyed. We know that this happened. This is what happened to Jack Phillips at Masterpiece Cake Shop. This is what happened to other businesses that ever stand up against th these radical political activists. They are targeted for years and years and years until the business is destroyed. And now they don't have the legal protections to stop that. And it wasn't just the Democrats who voted for it. Republicans voted for it too. This bill passed 61 to 36. So there were a bunch of squish lib, totally spineless, totally useless Republicans, people like Mitt Romney, who went along with it. This, this, is, how, this is how conservatism dies, <laughs> not with a bang, but with a whimper with a pathetic little squishy whimper, okay? And you're going to die too someday. That's why you need Epic Will. Right now, go to epicwill.com, use promo code Knowles. A will determines how your financial assets are dispersed, as well as your personal property. It ensures that your end-of-life decisions are honored when you are unable to see them through. For parents, a will determines who will raise your kids should you and your spouse die before they are of age. Without a will, the state will make this decision for you. If you're just starting out and you don't have thousands of dollars to spend on an attorney, but you want to make sure that your savings, your belongings, and your family are all protected, you've got to create your will at epicwill.com today. Epic Will bundles your last will, living will, healthcare power of attorney, HIPAA release, and durable financial power of attorney. It only costs 119 bucks, okay? 119 bucks for a single person to create a will. And when you use promo code Knowles, you will get 10% off. Go to epicwill.com. Use promo code Knowles, Canada W L E S. You can save 10% on Epic Will's complete will package. That is epicwill.com, promo code Knowles. The Libs used to say, what's it, what's it matter to you? What's if someone gets married, what's it matter to you? If someone, okay, let's say they don't get married, let's say we just, you know, fundamentally redefine what marriage is. What's it matter to you? Who cares what two people do in their house? Who cares? Well, they showed us what they think of their house yesterday when they lit up the White House in rainbow colors. Again, Obama already did it when the Supreme Court and Anthony Kennedy, the romantic poet from the Supreme Court, redefined marriage. Well, they did it a second time now. Who cares? Who care? I don't know who cares. I mean, I care, I guess. I care because it, this is political and I am supposed to have some say in my government. We are notionally a self-government still. Who cares what we say about marriage? Well, I care. It's the fundamental political institution. How does it affect you? How does it affect me that you are now broadcasting a, a brand new, uh, not only social, but religious message from the White House? This is religious. This is making religious claims. Joe Biden made religious claims. 
Joe Biden made the claim that our rights in the Constitution don't come from God. He said they're secular values. They're disconnected from God. That is a religious, an irreligious statement is really what it is. It's, it's an overt denial of God's role in giving us our rights. And obviously without God, we couldn't have any rights. Who, who gives us the rights? Who gives us the law? Who gives us this whole world? Who's the creator? He, Biden doesn't answer those questions. He just says it's not God. This is so radical. What's it matter to you? Come on, who cares? What's the, what's the big deal if we if we issue certain Supreme Court decisions that lead to the sexual revolution, going all the way back to Griswold and Eisenstadt and Lawrence and now Obergefell and all the rest of them, that just find in the Constitution all sorts of things that aren't there. You might like condoms very much. Show me the right to condoms in the Constitution. Show me the right to eccentric sexual practices in the Constitution. Show me the right to or the mandate to radically redefine marriage away from what everyone throughout history has thought it was in the country. It's just not there. But why do they do this sort of thing? Well, how does it affect you? How does it affect me, what the Constitution says? How does it affect me, what religion the White House is establishing on its portico? How does it affect me, whether or not I can run a business that, that, and not be forced to participate in acts that I consider to be immoral and sacrilegious? How does that affect me? It affects me. How does it affect me what the fundamental unit of society is? Who cares? Who cares? The left cares, dummies. I'm not talking to you. You people listening understand. But, but the squishes and the libs and the Mitt Romneys don't understand. How does it affect you? Who cares? The left cares. That's why the left has spent so much time and money trying to get this done ultimately with the acquiescence of you squishes and libs, Mitt Romney. That's why. Oh, who cares what pronouns we use? The libs obviously care. Maybe they care for a reason. Who cares which bathrooms people go into? The libs obviously care. Maybe they care for a reason. Maybe. Who cares what the meaning of marriage is? The libs care. Maybe they care because they recognize that words and symbols have meaning. And if you can pervert language, if you can pervert the signs and symbols in the way that we perceive ourselves in the world, then you can control the whole political culture. If you control the language, you can control people's minds. This is, of course, the thesis of my book, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. Number one national bestseller will still arrive in time for Christmas. Head on over to your favorite bookshop today. Make sure to order several copies. Now, I don't want to leave you hopeless here. With a little bit of hope, this law repeals the Defense of Marriage Act. Just, what, 16 years ago, Joe Biden went on TV and he defended the Defense of Marriage Act. And he said, I voted for the Defense of Marriage Act and that's the law of the land and we're not going to have gay marriage and that's the end of it. And now, of course, Joe Biden's making the absolute opposite arguments. And that's because Joe Biden doesn't believe anything and he just blows in the wind and he's completely unprincipled and he's a liar. He's been a liar for his whole public career, more so even than most politicians. Well, this, this should give us a little bit of hope because if the Democrats can repeal the Defense of Marriage Act, and we can repeal the so-called Respect for Marriage Act. We can. We can do it in principle. We should do it. The reason that we might not be able to do it in practice is because of the libs and the squishes, and they want to discourage us, and they want to tell us it's all lost. It's not all lost. The Democrats didn't say it's all lost after DOMA. The Democrats didn't say, oh, it's all, we have to give up. It's the law of the land now. We got to give up. No, they just, they just worked consistently for 16 years to, to repeal it. More than 16 years. Going back to the 90s, they worked to repeal it. And we can do the same thing. And we should do the same thing. We shouldn't let the libs and the squishes and the Mitt Romneys stop us. Now, Whoopi Goldberg has a theory as to why certain Republicans voted for this radical act that beyond whatever you think about marriage, that's almost secondary to what this act does. The act prohibiting the practice of Christianity and, and Judaism and Islam and reasonableness in an important way in the public square. Here's Whoopi's theory as to why some Republicans went along with it. Anytime somebody decides that they want to get married, celebrate them. Yeah. Celebrate yeah. them. Yeah. Don't tell them that they're, it's like Jim Crow laws, voting for that. Because you're giving the finger to lots of married couples. And I suspect many of these folks voted the way they did because somebody they know said, if you don't vote this way, I'll never speak to you again. Perhaps a lover, maybe a friend. Wait, what? Did you catch that at the end? She goes, yeah, it's because... These Republicans, people in their lives told them that if you vote this way, I'll never speak to you again. And maybe that person's a lover. T 
hee hee hee, maybe these Republicans, maybe they have gay lovers, secret gay lovers, and their gay lovers were going to be really upset with them if they didn't vote for this. Tee hee hee, tee hee 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 hee. So I don't, I don't think, look, I don't particularly care for Mitt Romney. He drives me up a wall. I don't think the guy's got a gay lover. I don't think that's why he voted for this stupid bill. Okay. The same with these other people who voted for it. But this is always where the, the libs go. They say, if you oppose their agenda, if you, if you think that drag queens shouldn't go read stories to kindergartners, say, well, why? Is it because you're secretly gay? Huh? Which is kind of funny because on the one hand, the libs are saying there's not, absolutely nothing wrong with being gay. It's actually the most wonderful thing in the world. Everybody should be gay. And then on the other hand, they're saying, yeah, what are you? Are you a gay? Like it's an insult. You know, yeah, if you ever disagree with this, we're going to call you gay, which is really wonderful. And it's the most wonderful thing in the world. Except when you do it, you gay guy, you dumb gay, gay person. You're like, like they're, you know, in fourth grade on the playground. So they, there's a little bit of a contradiction. You might even call it homophobic if you ask me. But Let's just go with Whoopi for a second. Let's say that this is why certain Republicans voted for it, because they all, they all have secret gay lovers. That, that part is, is probably not true. But everyone does have something. You know, everybody's got a past. Everybody's got skeletons. Everybody's done plenty of bad things that they're ashamed of. Uh, and a lot of it is sexual because man is such a sexual being, but some of it's not sexual. Maybe it's a financial fraud. Maybe it's uh, some other kind of political scandal. Maybe it's a family matter. Maybe it's whatever. It, it is a good reminder that you should live a clean life or you should endeavor to live the cleanest life you can because it's good for your soul and it will be conducive to your salvation in a virtuous society. But also because your enemies want you to live dirty. And they want you to live dirty because it can entrap you, because they can blackmail you, because they'll have dirt on you. Okay, this is one of the oldest tricks in the book, in the, in the darker corners of politics. Espionage, uh, political blackmail, all of it. You, you, you have these kind of honeypot operations where you try to get a guy to cheat on his wife, or you try to get a guy to take a bribe, or you try to get a guy to just do something dirty. And you do it because that will give you an upper hand on them. And we're living in a world right now that is defined by data. Increasingly, companies and governments are just getting every ounce of data that, that you possess. They're, they're prying it out of you without you even knowing it. They're, they're monitoring your eye movements on your phone to see what you're looking at when you're scrolling up and down social media apps. I think this is in large part why the powerful institutions in our culture are pushing pornography on people. I think it's because it compromises people. I think it's because it, it gives everyone such a sense of shame and fear and blackmail that, that they, they just acquiesce. It gives the people who are in power even more power. It's no different than J. Edgar Hoover running the FBI, getting dirt and compromise on people. It's no different than the KGB getting compromise on people. And so you, you've got to be aware of that just in your personal life. This is how they think. They think, yeah, well, we're going to tell people about your gay lover. Yeah, we're going to tell people about all your dirty habits. Yeah, if you don't go along with us. It is what it, what it has always been, a method of, of gaining more control. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do these terrible things. You don't, you know, you don't want to cheat on your wife. You don't want to, okay. In, in fact, marriage is so wonderful because you can give fully of yourself, okay? And you can, you can love your wife. I'm thinking of Song of Songs, all right? I'm thinking of just what a wonderful thing that can be. And uh, one way to, you know, even increase that sort of desire that you have uh, for your spouse would be with a pajamagram. Right now, go to pajamagram.com. Tell them Michael sent you. Women love getting new pajamas at Christmas time. Yeah, I love getting new pajamas at Christmas time. Everybody does. Pajamagram makes it very easy for us men. This year, I cannot wait to see sweet little Elisa in the naturally nude line of pajamas. Even more alluring than lingerie, the texture and feel of these pajamas is so silky and smooth that both you and your wife will love them. If you have no idea what to get your girlfriend or wife this year. Trust me, she wants these pajamas, but you need to order today because last year they sold out before Christmas. There's actually one time I was trying to get some pajama gram pajamas and I did it too late and they were sold out. So don't do that. Order today at pajama gram. They will include a free matching naturally nude nighty with your order. That is $75 savings 
on their best-selling holiday gift. Pajamagram offers free gift packaging, so your present comes ready to put under the tree. Go to pajamagram.com right now. Order the naturally nude pajamas. Arr, that's pajamagram.com for naturally nude pajamas. Arr, don't forget to tell them Michael sent you. Speaking of disordered sexuality, uh, Sam Brinton, the lipstick stiletto wearing doggy leather leading men around on a leash guy from the Department of Energy, he's been arrested and he's got a mugshot out there and he looks a lot more normal in the mugshot than he ever did in his office at the uh, Department of Energy. I've got an unpopular opinion. This is unpopular, so don't, I, I'm giving you fair warning. I feel sorry for Sam Brinton. I actually feel sorry for the guy. Uh, yes, he's left of Lenin. Yes, he seems to be a huge liar. Yes, he, he seems to have made up a lot of his biography. The center of his political biography is that he was subjected to conversion therapy as a child. You know that thing that doesn't exist? It was conversion therapy, and his awful parents tried to make him not be gay or transgender or into the leather puppy costumes or whatever he's into. And that's what set him on his political journey. But that story started to fall apart because he wouldn't mention who this evil doctor who tortured him was. He, he then got really fuzzy on the details. Then he said it actually happened in his 20s, not when he was a child or a teenager. And e even LGBTQ Nation, obviously a left-wing publication, has admitted, okay, this guy's story really doesn't check out. But the, I, I really feel sorry for Sam Brinton because he's obviously deeply mentally ill. He's obviously got all sorts of problems and disordered desires. And that's true of a lot of people. It's no excuse necessarily for just totally bad, depraved behavior, except for this. In the past, when people had mental illnesses and disorders and delusions and weird desires and stuff, the culture, the society would try to help that person would try to treat some of those illnesses, would, would try to dispel some of those delusions, would try to give these people therapy, proper therapy, that would say, no, you're not really a woman, you're a man. No, you shouldn't, you shouldn't drag men around on leashes in weird leather costumes. No, you don't wear lipstick. Boys don't wear lipstick. That's wrong. Unless you're David Bowie, take the lipstick off. No, you, no men don't wear the stiletto heels. No, men, you're a man, and what that means is certain things, and you're supposed to dress this way and do this kind of thing, and that's going to give you a better life. And in our culture, what happened was exactly the opposite. In our culture, every single delusion and disorder desire that Sam Brinton has ever had has been affirmed and celebrated by the culture. We know who he is because he engages in all these kinds of crazy antics and puts them all over social media and gives lectures about all of his bizarre, disordered sexual desires and how much he loves indulging them. And he gets celebrated by the establishment media for it. And he's, he's put up as an icon of civil rights and inclusivity. I promise you, had this guy not just gotten arrested for stealing women's clothing and luggage, he would have been at that White House ceremony. Joe Biden probably would have mentioned him by name because the administration has put him forward as a symbol of trans. And so I just, I feel bad for the guy because he's been abused by society. It, it has been criminal neglect and negligence that our society has engaged in with regard to this guy and with regard to so many other people. When, when the crazy purple haired people show up at my lectures and scream at me about how I'm not respecting trans, pans, dual spirit rights or whatever, I, ha I have a great deal of pity for them because very often these are young people and, and they have been indulged since the time they were five years old. And they've been groomed, frankly, by their, by their educators in many cases. And so it's not their fault. Exactly. It's not their fault. They're, they were raised in this way where in the old way, you'd, you'd be raised to tamp down your base passions and cultivate your higher reason and your rational will. Today, it's exactly the opposite. We're told don't trust your higher reason. We're told that your moral conscience is a liar. We're told that the institutions that once formed good, normal, flourishing people, they're all evil. Forget them. All you should do is indulge your, your appetites. You should 
You, you, we, sh- we should be fat positive. You should never stop eating. You should indulge gluttony. You should be sex positive. You should cultivate your lusts. The weirder your lusts, the better, and indulge them all the time. We're told that you should you should give vent to all of your passions, your wrath, your anger. If you're if if you're feeling some kind of passion, don't just suppress it. Don't cultivate patience. Not a spirit of resignation. No, no, you got to let it out. And you've especially got to hate your parents and you've got to hate the culture that you were raised in because it's evil and terrible. And ultimately, you should hate yourself and you should you should not ever even consider God as existing, much less seek a relationship with him. That's all hooey for a bunch of knuckle-dragging cavemen. No, no, not you. You're sophisticated. You just need to worship at the altar of what? The altar of our decadent culture. People have been taught this since they're five years old. Is it any wonder they turn out like Sam Brinton? We got a nation of Sam Brintons. That guy's not unusual these days. I mean, it's... It's unusual. You know, we all look at him as unusual. There was a survey that said that one in five, more than one in five, Zoomers identify as LGBTQ, identify as queer. Sam Brinton is increasingly becoming the norm. And that's when something becomes the norm, that's not merely the fault of individuals, that's the fault of the culture and of the society. You want to talk about our trashy culture? There's a new show. I'll probably watch some of it. It's on TLC, it's making the rounds right now. Set your cues, put it in your calendar. Milf Manor. Life has given me some curveballs. I think it's my time to find love. I was married for 14 years. I want to get a chance to do me a little. Young men have much more energy. They think out of the box. I want that. Especially in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I am in this amazing, beautiful mansion here in Mexico. This is a perfect place to find love. Welcome to the villa. You're about to embark on a dating experience like none other. Let's go! I have an extremely high libido. Is that too much, Shane? I have an extremely high libido. Should I just have said high libido? Ladies, where's all the men at? I'm ready to connect with somebody who doesn't really care how old I am. I'm just looking to have fun. Here we go. What the hell? It just got real. This is trash TV at its absolute finest. I probably won't watch it only because I don't subscribe to cable. But if I did, I, I probably would watch it. Okay, this is really reality TV just at its absolute peak. But it's trash. It's really, really disgusting. And it, that last line there is quite telling. She says, this just got real. And it, it did just get real in the whole premise of the show. Because these are MILFs. I won't go through the whole initialism or the whole acronym, but... The first, the first letter there refers to moms, mothers. And so this, this is getting kind of real because it's not just these young people who think that they have no consequences in their lives and they, they really don't have a lot of accountability in their day-to-day social life. And so they go out and it's the real world or it's the Jersey Shore or something like that. These are, these are people with children that are supposed to have families that they're raising that do have responsibilities to children. And they're what? They're, they're on some island in a manner for the express purpose of whoring around, right? Basically, they're taking money, they're being paid to go engage in weird kind of degenerate sexual performances with young guys on camera. That that does get kind of real. That's, That's actually different from the other TV shows that do exactly the same thing, because these are mothers. These are people that, 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 kids are looking up to, and, and it's, it's deeply scandalous, more scandalous even than other than trash TV. But the other thing that, that makes MILF Manor noteworthy and, and that tells you so much about our culture that we're living in today and why we're even talking about it is because the premise is absurd. Young men, generally speaking, don't want to sleep with older mothers. Generally speaking, maybe there's a few guys out there who that's, you know, de gusti bus non disputando mest. But generally speaking, that's not real. If the show were in the reverse, if the show were older guys who leave their wives and then sleep with younger women, that would be a normal thing. It's not, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but that does happen. That happens a lot. You, you, 
see a lot of couples where there's an older guy and a younger woman. You see very, very few couples where it's an older woman and a younger guy. And I think that is part of why TLC is pushing this sort of thing. Because this is what our culture does now. Our culture subverts expectations, transgresses norms, left and right. Does this all the way at the White House with the colors and the definition of marriage and the way that the officials dress. Our culture does this in what is taught in the schools and the universities. Our culture does this at, at pretty much every turn, even in reality TV. The fact that I mean, now you look at advertisements for lingerie, advertisements for clothing. It used to be that you would have really, really physically beautiful people modeling clothing. Now it's the opposite. And it's a, it's a political movement. They say, yeah, we're going to get the l- most out of shape models that you ever saw. We're going to have them put it on. We're, we're going to cultivate uh, a cult of ugliness. I mean, at every turn, you see uh, wickedness substituted for goodness. Our culture no longer uh, values goodness and virtue, but quite the opposite, actually. In, in our popular culture, you don't see the art and TV shows and books and movies elevating heroes. It's always anti-heroes. It's always guys who are really bad in the end. You think of the popular age of TV. Tony Soprano, Walter White, Don Draper, uh, Saul Goodman. All I mean, I could, the list goes on and on and on. Of all the great, it's all, always anti-heroes. And you see the culture elevating ugliness over beauty. It's probably a pretty funny TV show because of how absurd that is. But it's, it is partaking in its own little corner of the exact same subversion and, and upending of reality that you are seeing everywhere else. It is absurd. And speaking of absurdity, well, this is a great example of where you see this play out in political life. We're now told that the good guys are the criminals and the bad guys are the cops. That's what we've been told this for years now, as the Democrats have called to defund the police, abolish the police, let the criminals off the hook. It's the criminals, they're really the victims of society, and the victims of the crimes, they're really the oppressors, because it was their fault and society's fault that the criminals turned out the way that they did in the first place. So the victims are always the problem, the, the criminals are not the problem. And so now the governor of Oregon is going to commute the sentences of people on death row. Christmas is fast approaching. It's time for all the conservative aunts, mothers, daughters, sisters to take their place at the table. This year, you are not just bringing truth bombs, okay? You are bringing woke, eradicating gifts. Ladies, the men in your life are under constant assault. I'm going to let you in on that secret. The left is playing dirty, all right? It's time to wash out the woke and give your guys a gift that will uphold what they believe and make them look and smell better. That would be Jeremy's new hair, skin, and body care gift bundles. 100% woke free. Now, 30% off. Do you see what this is? This is Jeremy's charcoal body wash. Do you see what this is? This is Jeremy's shampoo. Do you know what shampoo I use? Do you know how I get this coif? This coiffure that I, that I bring to you every single day on the show? Jeremy's shampoo. That's how it's some of the best shampoo I've ever used. It's not full of harmful, gross, industrial chemicals. It is extremely natural. It smells great. It'll just, next time you're just cozying up to your husband, you give a little, little smell like you're Joe Biden smelling the back of his head, you'll be smelling me, okay? And many, many conservative men out there who are not giving our money to companies who hate us. They've got their wonderful Precision 5 razor flip back trimmer. It's spectacular. All you conservative familial characters out there, make your presence felt and much appreciated this Christmas. Go to jeremysrazors.com, get your loved ones some 30% off gift bundles. Today is your last day to order, to receive in time for the big merry day. Do not wait any longer. Do not wait, okay? This is, this is a festive time of year. You know who else is going to be celebrating this year? Uh, the worst criminals in the state of Oregon. The, the most vicious criminals Who've, who have done crimes, committed crimes that are so heinous that in, even in our day of age, which is opposed to the death penalty, they received the death penalty. We're talking, we are talking some of the worst people walking around. And the Oregon Democrat Governor Kate Brown just commuted all of the state's death sentences. And she's given them life without the possibility of parole. This is to 17 inmates. Why did she do it? 
She said, I have long believed that justice is not advanced by taking a life, and, and the state should not be in the business of executing people, even if a terrible crime placed them in prison. That, that is what the libs believe now, and I'm sorry to say that's even what many conservatives believe now. I'm sorry to say that's even what many Catholics believe now. And the Catholic Church always had a very clear view on this, but in recent years, some popes even and other people in the Catholic Church have suggested that the death penalty is evil, which is just insane. That's not true. Uh, that has never been the teaching of the church, going back to St. Paul, going back through all the doctors of the church. I've mentioned this before, but even Blessed Pius IX, who is <laughs> a pope, the last pope uh, to control the papal states, and he's been beatified on his way to canonization, on his way to, to being officially named a saint. He oversaw the executions of some 500 people in, in the papal states. So it was never considered that uh, to be in Christendom and, and throughout the West, throughout even as, as the West uh, pulled away a little bit from its overtly Christian founding and animation, still we, we defended capital punishment until relatively recently. And one of the reasons why is people say, well, it's not just. What are you talking? Of course it's just. Whosoever takes the the life of a man, whosoever sheds the blood of a man, by man shall his blood be shed. That is justice, right? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now, what's the, what's the next line after whosoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed? Is For man is made in the image and likeness of God. So people say, well, it's a contrary to human dignity for the state to execute criminals. Now, on, on the contrary, it is an affirmation of human dignity. It is, an, it is an affirmation that we take so seriously the dignity and value of human beings as images made in, as people made in the image and likeness of God, that if you kill someone, we will kill you back. We're going to take it very, very seriously. There are three purposes to criminal justice. Deterrence, rehabilitation, and retribution. And these days, we're told by bogus social scientists that deterrence doesn't really work. No one, no one seriously believes that. That's why we still have a criminal justice system. It's why we still punish criminals. But we have to pretend, based on a bunch of bogus studies, that actually, no, the punishments that we don't like, they actually don't deter any crime. So they take that off the table. And for rehabilitation, we say the, the only purpose of criminal justice is rehabilitation. And, and obviously, the death penalty doesn't rehabilitate anybody, so we've got to take it off the table. By the way, I think the death penalty does rehabilitate people. I think that, as Dr. Johnson pointed out, uh, depend upon it, sir, when a man knows he's to be hanged in a fortnight, it concentrates his mind wonderfully. I think hanging concentrates the mind. I think that actually the death penalty can rehabilitate people in, in many cases, much better than life in prison could because they will have to face the fact of their death. They will have to face their mortality. They will have to get right with God. So I think, it has a, I think the death penalty has a medicinal effect as well. But furthermore, the primary purpose of criminal justice is not deterrence and it's not rehabilitation. Those, can be, those are nice effects of criminal justice, but those are not the primary purpose. The primary purpose is retribution. The primary purpose is punishment. It's the only way to justify putting people in prison or killing them. It's the, the only way to justify it because you can deter people from committing crimes by killing all sorts of people in, in ways that might not be just, that might not be proportionate, okay? To just deter a crime. If you just had a, a, a crazy tyrannical regime that engaged in a reign of terror, that would probably keep people in line pretty well. You probably wouldn't even raise an eyebrow at the regime if they were just lopping off the heads of anyone who opposed them. That would deter people, but it wouldn't be very just. What about rehabilitation? Well, if rehabilitation were the primary purpose of prison and capital punishment, well, then you and I would probably end up in prison at any given time. We could all use a little rehabilitation. I'm not holier than thou. I'm not absolutely perfect. could use a little, but I haven't committed a crime, and therefore it would be unjust for me to go to prison. Retribution, that is the primary purpose of prison and criminal justice and capital punishment. You, you go there, you, have to, you, you face these punishments because you have committed a crime. And certain crimes are so heinous that human dignity strongly recommends the use of capital punishment because the state, the civil authority, 
does not wield the sword in vain. But today, we're so morally idiotic that we can't think about that. When was the last time that you heard a prominent politician say the purpose of criminal justice is, is to punish people for committing crimes? It's not just rehabilitation. It's not, no, that's completely lost, even among the people who should know better. So much for human dignity. I get, well, now we're saying that, that the, the rights and the values that we have, they're all secular values anyway. And the president of the United States is saying that the allegedly devout Catholic president of the United States. Is it any wonder that the rest of us are confused too? Speaking of dignity, one of the least dignified displays I have ever seen occurred yesterday. This, was, this is so pathetic. I almost didn't want to play this on the show because it just, it makes me feel ashamed to be a Republican. It makes me feel ashamed to be a man. Okay. It makes me feel ashamed. John Boehner, the former Republican Speaker of the House, appeared yesterday at the Capitol, it was broadcast on C-SPAN, to pay tribute to Democrat, soon to be former Speaker, Nancy Pelosi. And he didn't just do it as a perfunctory, well, you know, we disagreed on things, but you served your country. And uh, this guy was blubbering. He was crying about it. This, the, the former Republican leader in the House, just blubbering about how much he admires Nancy Pelosi. Madam Speaker, I have to say, my girls told me, tell the Speaker how much we admire her. I couldn't tell my girls are Democrats. It's all the speak. I just, I just, Nancy, I love you so much, Nancy. That was the Republican leader. Is it any wonder why Donald Trump got elected in 2016? Is it any wonder why Republicans, conservatives, just despise the Republican Party? Because that's who they are. The Republicans get elected so that they can go to to Washington, D.C., and pretend to put up a fight. And then at all the crucial moments, to squish and to concede and to give the Democrats what they want. But they'll pretend. They'll, they'll give the appearance of opposition. They're, they get elected so that they can go be court jesters in the kingdom of liberalism. There have been all these rumors for years. I'm not telling tales out of school. It's been in all the newspapers that John Boehner uh, likes to take a dram every now and again, you know, or more specifically red wine, you know, he's, uh, can toss him back. And uh, a lot of people say that the reason that he cries and blubbers all the time is because of that. I don't know. I don't have any particular evidence that John Boehner is an alcoholic. And I, I, don't, I actually don't want to spread that rumor or anything because I just don't know. In a way, I almost sort of hope that he is because it would explain this behavior more so than if he were absolutely stone cold sober all the time and say, wow, something is even more wrong here about that. But regardless, we, we, we can see John Boehner cannot control himself. He can't control his emotions. John Boehner famously cries in public all the time. And this is supposed to be endearing, according to especially the liberal media. But it's not. It's sad. It's not dignified. Don't do it. Now we're, to, now we're told real, real men cry all the time, and they whine, and they cry, and they're actually women. But no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't do that. You're going to cry from time to time. Do it on your own time. Do it in a corner. Don't, d d you got to act like a man. You got to be able to control yourself. You've got to be able to control all of your base passions and emotions and rein them in. Okay. Maybe you're a glutton. Maybe you're lustful. Maybe you're wrathful. Maybe you're blubbering. Maybe whatever. Keep it together, man. Keep it together. A great example of this is Jay Leno. Jay Leno, you know, Jay Leno just lit his face on fire and now he's telling jokes about it. We don't have time to get to it. There's a, there's a great though, there's a wonderful Jay Leno story. That'll be the, the uh, hook. That'll be the cliffhanger that I'm leaving you with on this public portion of the show. Because now we've got to get to the member block. We've got an amazing interview. A 14-year-old girl needs a kidney transplant. This 14-year-old girl is being denied the kidney transplant by Duke Medical because she won't take the COVID vaccine the vaccine that we now know is not nearly as safe as they told us it was, the vaccine that we know, now know is not nearly as effective as we told us, as, as they told us that it was, the vaccine that we now know does not really do all that much to, for younger people, 
Well, it does certain things to younger people, but none of them seem very good. This, the, the, the doctors at Duke Medical seem prepared to let a 14-year-old girl die because she can't get a kidney transplant rather than let her receive the kidney transplant without getting the experimental drug that Dr. Fauci has been peddling. We will be speaking to that young girl's mother. The rest of the show continues now. You do not want to miss it. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.